uh, first program of uh, the Treasure Presence, performed by Mr. Pavis Shahwazi, translated and interpreted into English by me, Muhammad Dazza Tai. There was a beggar sitting at a wall begging. One day, he asked a pedestrian passing by for some change. I have nothing to give you, said the passerby. The beggar insisted. As I told you, I have nothing to give you, but what's that you're selling on? Answered the passerby. This is a box I have been selling on as long as I remember, said the beggar. Have you ever looked into it? said the passerby. Then what for? What do you mean? What the heck is there in that? Answered the beggar. Finally, the pedestrian's insistence convinced the beggar to open up the box with a lot of toy. And to his surprise, the box was full of pure gold. The beggar had been sitting on a box full of pure gold for years, begging for money. The story refers to the true fact. If you start looking at our inner box and stop looking at boxes outside us, we will find a treasure which mystics call the treasure of presence. The other side of the story is that as long as we have not found the treasure of presence, we will be begging here and there outside us in order to get released from loneliness, grief, fears, angers, and our sense of imperfection, even if we are the wealthiest in the world. What on earth has covered this treasure of presence which exists in this very minute? Why did we see it? Mystics have defined this estate as freedom from the self, which will lead to a sense of joy and divine quietness and peace. Presence means the end of pain, agony, and sorrow. Say mystics. But they don't clarify presence or freedom. They do not define clarity either. So this is not a perfect definition of presence because it doesn't say what presence is, it only says what it is not. They may have deliberately not given a clear definition so that our mind and intellect cannot visualize something as the treasure of presence or as life or as peace and then put a label on it, leaving it on the niche of the mind, imagining it has been cognized. The thing that has captivated us, trapped the life, and cause us not to sense the life. And this moment is the self which vibrates in every fiber of our being in this very moment. Self is a very important word. Self does not exist outside. We make the self by thinking moment by moment, combining with it and turning into it. This kind of life makes us live in the past or in the future instead of living in the moment. What are you thinking about at this very moment you're looking at this book? It is certainly related to something in the past or in the future and not to this moment of time. By time, I don't mean past or future, but this very moment of life. If we are alive in this moment, we will sense the vibration of life, the divine peace and the natural joy which is related to human beings' natural state, as Rumi suggests. Awareness is remembering what is past. It is a veil covering God, your future and past. Set fire to them both, till when you will be staying naughty like an egg. When? 
we take our identity, our sense of aliveness and being from our thoughts, which are related to the past, we immediately give life to the future. As past and future are at opposite poles. Rumi says that your awareness comes from the past. So the future will surely be accompanied that. We cannot take identity and the sense of being from the past without the future existing for us. Therefore, we constantly are either in the past or in the future. And this past or future of yours is a veil separating you from God. Then he suggests that you set fire to the past and future both. Being in the past and future is the knots of your or our name. Our name should be a void, hollow instrument through which some music can be played. Then it continues that as long as there are knots of past and future in your name, the name player will not be able to play you. No ear pleasing music will come out of you. That's why we are so overladen with grief, conflicts, inconsistency, and imbalance in our lives. But when we're alive in this moment, something strange happens. We get the consciousness invested in thoughts out of the process of thinking, the process which has swallowed up all our consist consciousness making us get assimilated into it. At this moment, observe your thoughts to say what you are thinking about. This observation of thoughts will cause you to get distracted from them. And when you get distracted from thoughts, they will no more be able to absorb your consciousness. When something happens, you can see how the happening swallows up. Swallows us up. Sometimes you react immediately with anger or fear because we get engrafted and assimilated into our thoughts. Now we decide to observe our thoughts so that the thoughts cannot draw our consciousness in. Here I bring up a poem from Iqbal Lahuri with the title of Man's Birth in which there are a lot of pithy concepts. Love blotted out of joy that there has a being appeared being able to experience love. But what's love? It is the sense of living which exists in all creatures of the universe. There is only one life pulsating in all the universe. The life vibrating in me is the same one which exists in animals, plants, stones and you. Love means sensing that life and turning into it. Thus. Human being feels oneness with all the creatures of the universe and it is a state in which man is not interested in only one thing. This kind of love in fact is to unite with all the creatures of the universe and to feel oneness is totally different from the love which exists in the mind, which is the uh, contact our mind wants to make with other creatures. Iqbal defines human being as an existence, being able to sense oneness with the whole universe and to become the life itself. Do we have such a feeling? Beauty sugars 
out of joy that there has a being appeared, being able to perceive and experience beauty. Human being, as far as we recognize, is the only creature who can directly perceive beauty. Beauty cannot be perceived by mind, beliefs, or opinions. We look at a beautiful flower sometime and start speaking about it superficially and say we have seen it before. For instance, it has these many petals or grows in that particular place. We rather get information about the flower than the beauty. We cannot directly perceive the beauty of flower with this information by our mind which is the very veil of delusion taking us to the past or future, avoiding us from the sense of life in this moment. And here is, which is the nature of human being was disorganized and changed and something new appeared. We do not know what most of these beliefs or opinions mean and just think about them. We just think about them. For instance, we don't know what inheritance, love, creativity or life is, but we can utter a lot of things about them because the sense of such immense concepts should be experienced in the form of living vibration in this moment. These concepts are either experienced in this very moment or never. These concepts cannot be experienced in the past or future, but only in this moment by feeling the sense of the vibration of life, peace, joy, and oneness in our whole existence. And hearings changed and converted into something that can make itself and break away. Therefore, it is only human being that can make himself up over and over again 